Hi, I'm Sam, and this is Sam Says. Today, I'm going to be taking a look at Kokoro, Avenue of the Kodama, published by Indie Boards and Cards. Kokoro is playable by 1 to 8 players and takes approximately 20 to 30 minutes to be able to play. If you have people who know what they're doing, you can do it a lot faster and you may be able to get a game in in about 15 minutes. The basics of the game is in Kokoro, everyone is given a sheet. And this has a bunch of spaces on there with either sanctuaries, nothing, or different symbols that are either flowers or worms. In addition, you also have two very special people on here. The boards are double-sided, so you actually have two different game modes that you can play. During the game, you are going to be creating paths on your game board using your marker. Everyone is going to be taking turns simultaneously. At the beginning of the round, a Sanctuary card will be revealed. In this instance, C. That means that Sanctuary C is going to score this round. How Sanctuary C scores is you are going to try and create a path and connect Sanctuary C via a path to as many symbols as possible. As the turn goes around, or as the round goes, on every turn, a path card is drawn from the deck, and it is going to give you a certain configuration. Everybody at the table gets to use that path, con that path configuration to be able to put on their player board. Now, you can use it if you want, but if you choose not to use it, you can look at the next sanctuary that is going to score for next round. Now, that is very important because the scoring in Kodama is pretty unique. Let's say in this first round, I connect C to five separate symbols. So on my player board, I'm going to mark at the end of the round that I connected it to five symbols and that will score five points for me at the end of the game. Now let's say Sanctuary E scores next and I'm able to connect Sanctuary E to seven different symbols. So I will write down seven. Now let's say the next Sanctuary that scores, I'm only able to connect it to three. What happens with that is because I didn't beat the amount of symbols that I scored on the previous sanctuary, I actually score a zero for that particular sanctuary. And at the end of the game, it's going to be negative five points. So it's very important if you can to be able to slowly build up the point values for every sanctuary that you are going to build. That is hard to do though. One of the unique things about Kokoro is as you are building these paths, there are a lot of path and tile laying games out there. And this isn't tile laying, it's actually drawing the path on your board. But the, each, each configuration um, only has two exits for each section of your board, which means you're not going to have a lot of different paths going around and you're not going to be able to connect a single sanctuary to multiple paths. When you connect a sanctuary to a path, it will be only connected to one long running path. Now, it is possible to, at the end of the game, connect all of your sanctuaries on the exact same path. It's hard to do, but it can be done. It makes for some very interesting choices on whether you want to cut off a big, long, winding path and make smaller paths that you'll be able to probably more easily connect to more sanctuaries, or whether you really want to go for the big, big points at the end and try and score that last sanctuary with a ton of big points. There's another aspect to the game, um, and that is the Guardians. So at the top of the sheet you see here, there is this Guardian that has the Worm symbol next to it, and at the other corner you have the other Guardian with the Flower symbol next to it. These are additional ways to score victory points. At the end of the game, each Guardian will score points equal to however many symbols of their particular type they're connected to via a path. So if you were able to do that one long continuous path and got a ton of extra symbols connected to those guardians, that's going to be a way for you to score extra points as well. A couple of variants to the game. You can play on the back side, which is going to be pink so it helps you distinguish, and you can roll the 10-sided die that's included um, and randomize where those guardians will go. It gives you a bit of more random setup, because other than that, the game setup is going to be the same every time. The only thing that changes is in what order the sanctuaries are going to be revealed. 
Uh, in addition, there are there's another deck of cards. Um, and these deck of cards actually add a condition to the game if you choose to play with it. So, in for instance, in this game, if I were to have revealed this card, it says that I can use um, the number one path and the number two path as if they were each other. So it gives you a lot more versatility for this particular game. Some of these will limit what you can do. Some of them, like this one, expands your options and give you a lot, gives you a lot uh, more variability in what you can do. Something I like about these game boards is if you look on the bottom, it has every single card that is going to be included in this deck. And there are only six configurations. So if you ever have a question of like, oh man, how many of these am I going to need? You know, where are they going to be? What are my options? You can see exactly on here the only six types of cards that are going to be revealed. So it gives you a lot of that information there, which is very nice. It's easy to reference. There is one very big glaring thing about this game that I'm going to come out with right now. It is very similar to a, an award-winning or award-nominated game, Karuba. Um, now, Karuba is an excellent game. I'm a very, very big fan of Karuba. It's one of my favorite games to be able to play with my wife and with my family because it's easy to learn, easy to understand, um, and just fun. Kokoro has a lot of similarities to Karuba. So if you're going to be compared to another game, you might as well be compared to a good one. There are a few key differences in this. Um, in Karuba, you know exactly what your goal is at the very beginning of the game. You know what's going to score and how it's going to score. Kokoro kind of leaves that up in the air, so you're never sure exactly what's going to score. Um, and if you don't increase the amount of points you get from each sanctuary, you may not score at all. In fact, it could be negative points. Now, some people really like that because it adjusts the way that you have to think about the game um, and you have to really adapt to what the game throws at you rather than having a set idea of what to do at the very beginning. For instance, my wife, she did not um, enjoy the not knowing what was going to score. She didn't like that about this. She much preferred Karuba to this. I, on the other hand, I loved Kokoro. I thought this was a very, very fun game. And I loved that it could be played solo. Um, it's It goes pretty quick on solo, and all you're doing is trying to beat the amount of points. Um, and after I played a few times, really what I was just trying to do is I tried to create one big, long path that connected both Guardians and all Sanctuaries, and I ended up doing that and scored a whole ton of points. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was well over 100. Uh, and it was fun. Uh, I enjoyed playing this game solo. It's something I could whip out and play in 15 minutes. Uh, so, you know, just waiting around and, you know, for whatever time, uh, it makes for a very, a very easy game to pull out and play. In addition, the box is not huge. You know, for an eight-person game, you can get it out of this box, and I think it will scratch a little bit of an itch so you can get some fun strategy in while being able to play with both kids and adults alike. Um, and and so I think for a lot of gamers, this is going to fit, fit a niche for them. Now I will say, with the comparison to Karuba, if you have Karuba and you like it, unless you plan on playing solo, so if you're a solo gamer, then Kokora I think is worth it to pick up. If you already own Karuba, I think this game is similar enough that it's not going to be necessary to add to your collection. My personal opinion. Still a great game. So let me get down to it. What worked and what didn't work? So let's start with what didn't work. Not a whole lot. I, I mean, in, in reality, this game is, is well designed, and what it's trying to do, it does really well. Um, I, I really don't have a lot to say on what didn't work about it. I, you could complain about maybe not, not knowing what's coming up, but they give you a way to see that. I, and that's just your personal preference if you don't like that. So I really don't have anything negative to say about this game. It works really well. And so what does work? I love the configuration of the player board. Um, I think graphic design is something that game, com game publishers are getting better at. And for me, it makes a huge difference in a game. If you can come out and make things work visually and functionally, that's huge. And for Kokoro, it works. Your whole player board is right here, and you can play the entire game. You see exactly what cards are going to come out. You have your scoring, 
and you have your game board that you're going to be playing on. It's brilliant, I would say. I love what indie boards and cards did to this, and these are high quality. The components are nice. Overall, Kokoro was good. I enjoyed it. Uh, obviously, some of the things I brought up with comparisons, you can kind of make your own call. Uh, try it out. But if you are a solo gamer like I am, this is probably worth it to add to your collection. But that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Sam. This is Sam Says. If you can, please hit subscribe. I'd love to be able to share more of my reviews with you. And if you have a game that you'd like to see me do a review on, let me know in the comments. I'd love to take a look at it for you. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.